If I only showed you the many highlights of our recent trip, you might get the impression that in Khalakhari you are bound to see large predators 24-7. That is not always the case. Khalakhari is like five-day cricket. Nothing may be happening, but something could happen at any moment. The first day we saw meerkats and very little else. Khalakhari is like five day cricket. Nothing may be happening, but something could happen at any moment. Temperatures were quite variable, starting at zero degrees Celsius in the morning and reaching 32 degrees the same afternoon. The second day we saw nice general game, including beautiful Ginsbok, but no predators. Khalakhari is like five-day cricket. Nothing may be happening, but something could happen at any moment. located to the Ruiputz campsite. This campsite, just on the Botswana side of the Nossop River, is one of our favorites. Each stand features an A-frame for shade, a long drop toilet, and a shower enclosure with cold water. It is unfenced and game regularly walks through the campsite. Another day, another opportunity to see something spectacular. Springbok always seem to browse with great urgency. Khalakhari is like five-day cricket. Nothing may be happening, but something could happen at any moment. And it's about time for a wicket to fall now. Khalakhari is like five-day cricket. Nothing may be happening, but something could happen at any moment. And then a wicket fell. Following up on a tip from another traveler, we encountered these two young leopards at their den near Melkflay.
spot a honey badger on the opposite side of the road. One of the leopards notices it too and goes to investigate. Honey badgers are not to be trifled with. The young leopard decides that discretion is the better part of valor and beats a retreat. After several hours with the leopards, we have brunch at the Melkflay picnic site. Late that afternoon we spot this beautiful red hartebeest bull. Also notice the excellent condition of the road. Further north it would be quite the opposite. Kalahari is like five-day cricket. Nothing may be happening, but something could happen at any moment. And when the wickets start falling, they continue falling. So on the same afternoon, we see a cheetah coming to drink at the Ruipet's waterhole. spots some springbok down the river and starts a long roundabout stalk. She ends up using our vehicle as cover. But then night falls and she abandons the stalk. The following morning, we briefly meet up with her again. find this male cheetah sitting on a dune and calling. We were told a rather sad story. Apparently his brother and coalition partner died a few months ago and he has been patrolling the riverbeds, searching for his lost brother, 
ever since. Eventually, he went over a dune and we did not see him again. It was a day for rather sad experiences. We noticed this forlorn-looking, lone eland calf wandering around. And then we see why. That afternoon, we relocate to the luxury of the Kilikranki Wilderness Camp for a few days. The five chalets each have a kitchenette. bedroom with two beds a bathroom with flush toilet and a hot shower provided by a gas geyser have a nice view over the dunes and a deck where you can sit and relax. Kilikronki is not known for large concentrations of game, but you may encounter very inquisitive honey badgers that will enter your unit if you leave a door open. sundown we also saw a pair of cape foxes. Kilikronki is just a short drive away from the Awap River Valley which is very productive for game sightings. We see some interesting and even bizarre giraffe behavior around the skeleton of a dead giraffe. 
Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him well. This phenomenon of giraffe chewing on bones is known as osteophagia. It is believed that they do it to obtain calcium and phosphorus from the bones, which is lacking in their regular diet, especially at the end of the dry season. It was noticeable that it was mostly the younger, still growing giraffes who were chewing on the bones. By waterhole, we spot a small family group of Irland. This bull has exceptionally long horns for an Irland. We saw quite a number of honey badgers. With their long claws, they are very adept at digging. In this video, you would often have heard the wind in the background. August is definitely the windy and dusty season in Khalakhari. are more meerkats, also known as suricate. Khalakhari is quite a birder's paradise. This is a curry busted the heaviest flying bird in southern Africa. In the next episode, we drive some extremely corrugated roads. 
and see lions, lots and lots of lions. Thanks for watching.